Hello, this is Balaka Badge, and welcome back to more of Sun the Sea, Zubmarina. Ha, ha, ha. And we are, hmm, we are sort of in the middle of the map. It's, uh, no, we, we better zoom out a little. We're looking for the Sea of Lilies. I hear it's mid-eastern. So, from where I am, I would presume sort of this area here. Don't know. Never played this game this far in before. Interesting. It's all very interesting. I, I, I fear we're close, but it's a sort of game where you might miss it. So, but we were, we're trying to to help our cook find the Sea of Lilies for some reason, and you know, find a few ports along the way. We need the money, you know. Our hull's not looking the best. Our fears pretty high. Our food and fuel are rubbish. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh my. I guess, if we're going to be rhyming, let's crack on. <laughs> so let's not do any more rhyming. Um, I I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know which way to go. Uh, I, I sort of want to head northeast, but I am very aware of the fact that we are running quite low on fuel. In fact, let's turn that damn light off. Jeez. Uh, so, yeah, we, we might run out of fuel. That's that's probably about as much as I've gauged so far. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping there's something close which is going to be fortuitous to us. We always seem to be scrimping on fuel or food. So it's a bit awkward, a bit awkward. The principles of coral. The corpse rainbow glow from beneath the waves echoes the false stars above. And we've discovered the Bidmead reefs. 50 fragments gained. Huzzah. Huzzah. Oh, this looks interesting. Do you have a port on you, sir? No. No. A false star flares in the cavern roof directly above you. Flares and fades. Oh, this is pretty cool. Bidmead reefs. Dow's... What's that? Eight? Is that right? Eight? A-I-T? Eight? Yeah, eight. Uh, right, so... We... I think it might be worth just heading north now and hopefully we'll come across something. These look a little like turtle shells. I'm, I'm sure they're not, but uh, they, they have a little look to them. Oh, I'm not liking this. Oh, that looks like a slightly bigger, slightly bigger island. Oh, dearie. Oh, you're a big one. You're a big one. Leave me alone. I can't take this. No, 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 that's not good. He's, I don't think he's that interested in me. Yeah, yeah, he's stuck against the reef. That's good. You stay there. We'll we'll stay over here. And I apologise. I should have been paying more attention to the game. Oh, I've lost a crew as well. Oh dear. And uh, now we've got a big swirly thing. Where is everyone? Where did they go? They're here. They're here. You're not alone. Scuttering and chittering in the corners of the hold. What's this? Humped shapes on the deck rail. Ratsy air emboldens vermin. <gasps> Uh, what are you? All these big things and I'm almost dead. A rat barge. Oh, they won't be happy with us. Oh, there's a port there. Thank God for that. Let me in. Let me in. And please, please, please fix my boat. Please, please, please. Oh, it's got a statue on. Don't know what you're called. There we go. McMaster's Haven. Oh, we've got two things here. Truth and dreams. The knee for the cavern that holds the undersea is proud by dreams. Do we have a dreamy sesh? Let's let's have a dreamy sesh. The neath the cavern that holds the Untersea is proud by dreams. There's a story that it was once the skull of a dead god. Perhaps that would explain it. Listen to your dreams or sleep deeply. Still can't sleep deeply. Let's listen to... Is this going to use up my... Yeah, something to wait you. I don't want to use that because I'd like to go to Nuncio. Taciturn. Functionaries walk the docks in the uniforms of postmen. An enormous crown statue casts a chilling shadow. The shadows gleam with rat's eyes. The ceaseless chittering rolls like the tide. Oh, crap. I, I, if, if this is a rat-infested island, I hope, I hope to God they don't think or remember or know what I've done with that other island. Because that's probably not going to be good. The, we'll get the guinea pig to hide down down in the the bowels of the of the ship. The guinea pig doesn't have to come out. That's fine. They don't need to know. Go to the postman's tavern. The inky blotter, it's called. The sign doesn't look like much. We can explore along the beach, or we can assemble a portal port. What do we need? 
Unlocked with Nuncio learned in the postal secrets no more than seven, which we haven't done. Unlocked with Nuncio cultivating friendships with postmen no more than zero. You may not be familiar with the locals yet, but you can provide a preliminary overview. That's, hmm. Is that worth doing first, or should we get to know them? Let's get to know them. Let's get to know them. Faces turn in your direction, but no one seems surprised to have a new arrival on the island. Ugh. Led by two roaring fires, one at either end of the room, the bartender is in postman's uniform. Like almost all of the patrons, a noseless poster in postal inspector called Blunt Thomas delivers the drinks, clears tables, and stacks the firewood. So we can listen in on the postal tall tales. Fishermen brag about their fish that got away. Postmen brag about hard deliveries. We can ask why the local currency consists of rats. Two strings of rats for a pint of ale. Three strings for wine. Five for the tolerable brandy under the bar. Ah, so they don't like rats. Oh, then you're very welcome to come out, Mr. Guinea Pig. Ask about that big statue in the centre of the island. If there were a guidebook for visitors, it would have to be the first entry. Ask how they all occupy themselves all day. There must be more to it than this. Or back to the docks. Right, so work it in dead letters. No more than zero. No more than three. No more than three. No more than three. So I think we can ask all these questions. So let's do the tall tales first. Fishermen brag about their fish that got away. Postmen brag about their hard deliveries. Amazing what you can get for a penny stamp. Delicate bat battles, battles lowered down chimneys on a rope. Do not fold under any circumstance. Letters curled through a narrow slot. Rattling, groaning crates brought back to the same address every day for 22 days running. The windows that they pried on open. The servants they bribed. The delivery surcharges they paid out of their own salaries just to get rid of one more packet. It is hard to tell which they hate more. The senders of the mail or the recipients. Stands to reason, if the message was a welcome one, they'd tell the other fellow in person, reflects the hairless postwoman. Hmm. That's, mm, that's an interesting point. Yeah, why send post in a day of instantaneous communication? It, yeah, it, it, it's, an, it's an interesting one. Uh, unless it's a bill, of course. Uh, so, yes, uh, we have one, a newcomer in the Nuncio. Looks like we're getting friendly. Okay. Uh, let's ask why the local currency consists of rats. Two strings of rats were bottled up here. Scarcity is not an issue. The hairless postwoman at the end of the bar smiles mirthlessly. Or maybe it's just the lack of eyebrows that does it. Long enough carrying the things around, you get into the habit, she says. Then she tells you that if you stay out late enough, you'll see some of the postmen making a procession to the centre of the island, stringing up wraps around the statue like yuletide decorations, in prayer to the ancient deity of this place. From the coughing and choking elsewhere in the pub, you'd guess this is a story they often tell to newcomers. Uh, so I am now a newcomer. Oh, I'm moving up the ranks. Uh, right. <laughs> Ask why the hairless postwoman is hairless. Uh, no, I want to ask... Oh, I'm going to ask about the statue first, and then we'll ask about the hairless woman. Uh, the monumental postman. Oh, that... It's all of us, isn't it? Sort of the spirit of the island. Most of them don't seem troubled for more of an explanation than that. Though the hairless postwoman tells you it didn't always look like a fallen London postman at all. And it used to have a different face and a more old-fashioned outfit. Okay. Do we ask her now? Are we friends? Can, is, is it a sort of question you can ask a woman? It's like her age, isn't it? Why do you have not a hair on your head? Or anywhere else, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> right, legacy of some interesting explosive package, maybe. Faux pas. No, she says. Kurt, not pleased you asked. Still had eyebrows when I came to Nuncio. The postman at the next bench diverts you, speaks in a low voice. Lots of people find habits when they can't deliver the post anymore. This one has a plucking habit. Best learn not to notice. You glance up. The hairless postman is still glaring at you. Great, great. So... Oh, back to newcomer. Ah, oh, ah, oh, shouldn't have said that. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, what, what do they do? I must be more than this. Dead letter office. Big building, centre of town, hard to miss. You can work there too if you want. It's not clear whether this is a generous offer or a threat. An occurrence. Ooh. Your nuncio worker in dead letters quality is now one. Invited to serve. We need money. We might have to do this. Uh, and we are back to being a newcomer. Great, great. Right, so that's the uh, the inky blot dealt with, or inky blotter. Uh, try a shift at the dead letter office. This is a sign of a cancelled stamp over the door. 
Ooh, we can we can do it. Shall we do it? Let's do it. There is a sign of a cancelled stamp over the door. That's why. Extensive tour. Blunt Thomas takes you around the office, a small collection room where those retrieving letters may state their business. A much larger set of back offices where newly arrived letters and parcels are collected and sorted. A dank, briny smell that never goes away, presumably because of so many of the parcels spent time in the water before they arrived here. In the back room is a machine manned, ratted, by a postal rat, a ratus faber in a pinstriped hat. It shovels sludge damp letters into the machine's hopper and they come out dried, cleaned, pressed and sorted into slots by the size and quality of the paper. Oh, I'm doing working shifts now. Uh, one has various possible occupations here. None could be described as fast-paced. Okay, so we converse with the postal rat. Postal rat. Uh, yeah, we can just about do that. There's no more than three. Let's give it a whirl. How did he get into this line of work? Cultish. The postal rat has a pair of spectacles on and is re-lettering the front of a water-damaged envelope, working over the original letters with a tiny brush and ink pot. The repairs are likely to take most of the afternoon. I like to think of myself as being in the resurrection business, he says, stopping to look at you seriously for a minute. Where circumstances permit, taking the dead letters and making them alive again doesn't often work, but when it does, a miracle. You've gained one plus nuncio. Oh, okay, so we are getting friendlier. We're accepted by the locals. Cool. Cool. Uh, what, ooh, what can we do here? Man the collections window. Better chances of meeting people. Slightly better. And uh, we have pretty good odds on that. Mm. Make a study of what goes on in the back room. I don't really want to waste my something and wait you on that. Uh, I'm going to go for our employment because... We need the money. We need the money. And we need to be able to fix ourselves if possible. We've definitely got to keep away from anything else which uh, may come and hit us in the face. So let's do that. Offer employment to the postal rat's niece. He asks it as a favour and she sounds well trained and eager. Strongest possible recommendation. The postal rat is grateful and says so at length and in a variety of ways. Only so much work go around on Nuncio. She keeps asking to assist me here. But as you can see, a gesture is at a heap of loose gears and un unhooked chains. I hardly require any assistance. And my research is at so delicate a stage. But she's an excellent worker, very bright, like her mother. You now have a one Rattus Faber assistant. And we've gained... Oh, another friendship thing. So we're accepted now. What the bloody hell's that? Now, in combat, Rattus Faber assistants can be deployed for quicker repairs. It's dangerous work. Don't expect them back. Ah, we looked at that before, didn't we? I might use, I might put myself into combat to use that to get out of combat, and run away and get a fix on the on the hull. That sounds cool. Are we done there? Can we do anything else? Let's have a look. It seems to be the sh the chief op occupation hereabouts. The, sh oh, the bell chimes above the door. The fellow manning collections looks awake for half a second when you come in until he realizes you're here to relieve him. Aha. So we've conversed. We don't want to end our shift. Oh, we can't do that now. Can't do the study. Can we? Mm. Ask the postal rat for a key to the basements. No. No, we've got to be friendly with them. Okay, well, let's go. Oh, no, hang on. Let's let's go back. Let's go back. Let's. Oh. In the empty block, ask to borrow a uniform. If you're to fit in here, you'll need one. Yeah, why not? It's like uniform. Look, but not touch. They're polite, even apologetic about your request. You're welcome here and welcome to take shifts at the dead letter office, but you cannot wear the uniform unless you were a postal employee back in fallen London. Regulations. Blunt Thomas lets you have a look at his uniform jacket, at least. Neat stitching, gilded buttons, a thin but dignified circle of braid at the collar. Inside, a patch that goes over the heart, stitched with six red letters. You can't read it, but it makes your eyes itch and your scalp feel like burning. Yeah, that's not good. But we've got the extra gain there, which is good aid. So let's go back to the dead letter office. And here we go. We can have a key to the basements now. There are doors in the dead letter office that you've never seen opened. 
Surely you, you can be trusted. No trouble at all. He's surprised by the request. Most policemen don't like it down there. No one ever asks for a key, but he'll cut you a new one. Just be careful in there and come out if you start to feel wrong. Hmm, okay. If I start to feel wrong. One has a various possible occupations here. None can be described as fast power. We're doing a bit. Right, okay. Open the back rooms. The key is warm in your pocket. Well, let's do it. Deeper. Oh, deep and deeper. You had expected a few shelves of supplies, more files of letters, a few years older. No, it's a pit. So deep that lantern light does not show the bottom. A spiral walkway descends along its walls. And that, that spiral opens wider as it goes. And if you were looking through the narrow end of a... As if you were looking through the narrow end of a very large shell. Lining this wall are shelves and nooks, unevenly sized. Some are a few inches square and contain single scrolls of papyrus. Others, others support crates bigger than coffins. They've made of a woody fungus, grown to meet requirements. There are no marks of carpentry or any of the postal rat's handiwork. Three turns down the spiral on your floor, you can't breathe. Time to leave. You can come back later. Maybe. Uh, so we're now a basement custodian. Uh, and we've gained terror. Great. <laughs> uh, and, uh, oh, what's this? An occurrence. Your, your nuncio, learn, learned in postal secrets, quality is now five. Explore the lower basements. Right. Let's tell the rat what went on. Gives you something to chat about. Right, okay, trouble, but not surprised. They say that's been there since before we came, before there were Londoners in the Neath. Before there was a dead letter office, there was something else. And they built the last layer on top of what was there before, and so on. When you press him a little further, he says, I've been down there, didn't like it much, but I wouldn't wanted to test my machine. Thought it could handle some of the very old dead letters. That would be a good sign, you know. Evidence the machine was in working order. Good, strong sorting categories and so forth. He pauses. There's letters down there that set your hair on fire, if you so much as look at them. See the bald patch on my left leg? That wasn't a machine accident. Oh no. That sits right off as soon as I put my nose into one of them letters. So, right, so we're now familiar with the flaming letters. Jesus, it just keeps getting weirder and weirder. And we're cultivating friendships. Oh, we haven't changed. That's fine. We've got a tale of terror. Cool. And we have an extraordinary implication. How can such a thing be? Who but you can understand what it means? I don't know. Um, oh. What do we need here then? Got that. We need five foxfire candles and a flare. Ugh. Can't do that. Descend into the basement with mirrors. Oh, definitely no chance of that. Okay, I think we're done here. Can we do anything else in the in the tavern now we're a like, little bit higher? Trade war stories about your shift work. You know how to fit in. Or talk about the cabins below the dead letter office. Yes, someone must know something or be curious. That sounds good. Perhaps not. You don't get far into your question before the hairless postwoman stands up and goes over to the fire, holding herself tightly. She is whispering, nothing coherent. Fire, clean, smooth, down to the bone. No excuse. Smooth, smooth, little black hairs. St Still your full tongue, says Blunt Thomas. Oh, oh we've upset people. Okay, well let's trade war stories. You know how to fit in. The parcels you've weighed and entered in, our, in log books. The things that oozed out of them. The postmen are delighted by your incredulity and shock. A civilian finally understanding the full horror of the post. They have stories even worse than those, let me tell you. Hang on a moment. Postmaster Scritch, we've all heard your rubbery lump story already. It's nothing to the tomb colony, Pickles. Pickled what is what I want to know. What about the soup and copper crate? And how we had to scrape the bits off the masonry. Do you remember? The night runs late. Oh, we're back up. We're back to trust it. Okay, right. So, uh, we can't... We don't want to borrow... No one wants to talk about the uh, downstairs. So, okay. That's fine. We didn't, really, we didn't really accomplish anything there. It sort of just went in a big loop. Uh, let's have a look along the beach. There's a long stretch of shale dotted with washed up kegs and barrels and smaller flotsam. And the rock slips and sliver underfoot, but you keep your balance. Every lap of the wave drags up some new letter or parcel. The face of the water is dotted with them, as far as you can see in the, this blackness, carried by a powerful current. So we can collect material for the dead letter office. 
Oh, okay. We can take soundings, whatever that may be. Perhaps there is some evidence of the great hollowness underneath these shores. Yeah, what? Well, oh, not through the notes here. We're getting dead letters one. So we can collect that. That might get us some money. Let's take the sounding first. Perhaps there is some evidence of the great hollowness underneath these shores. Depth below. Striking the ground causes the stones to shift and rattle. It is hard at first to hear anything more than that. But if you try long enough and strike hard enough, the whole beach shivers like the surface of a drum. The flotsam letters quiver and align themselves in concentric circles around the point of impact. The next wave brings ashore three or four times the usual freight. Ah! Cool. Right, in which case, let's uh, go here. That's where all this flotsam belongs, so it can be sorted. Will of its own. You make your way along ashore with a big sack. Many of the envelopes are too damp to read. Their address is permanently lost. But a surprising number are still legible. There are also parcels. Here and there is a crate, a message in a wine bottle, a sealed cask that is bobbed up and out of a shipwreck. Your sack ought to get heavy with all these contents, but it pulls upwards and away, straining inland towards the dead letter office like an unmanageable dog. Okay, so uh, we now have dead post. Can we collect any more? Yes, we can. And again. Let's do this as much as we can I don't think anything else is changing no it's not six seven eight we'll go for ten I don't know what the hell this is going to do <laughs> and uh, let's go back to the docks so now one would presume if I went back to the dead letter office continue here we go. Feed the undeliverable items into the sorting machine. The gleaming hopper awaits. Go. The gleaming hopper awaits. 52 categories. Jeez. After prolonged whirring, and the machine begins to distribute. Seven invitations edged in gilt into the correspondence of the aristocracy slot. Two oversized parcels, probably containing books, into the books tray. One stamped bronze tablet that drops with a clang into a bin marked First City. The personal rat watches with all this with an air of satisfaction. Okay. Um, cultivating friendships. No, I don't think anything's going to go on there. We've had no money. No nothing. That was rubbish. What? All right, we'll do, we'll, do, we'll do five. See if anything changes. Uh, no. 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 Uh, no. Okay, fine. And, jeez. Let's, let's leave it. Nothing's happening here. Maybe they said something in the, in the tavern about it. Show off your sack of undeliverable post. It's full of conversation starting bits, like this parcel with the bloodstains. Uh, let's give it a go. Take it away! Everyone flinches when you open the sack. The bartender speaks for everyone. What's wrong with you bringing that stuff here? Take it around to the dead letter office. Wonder you can't carry it with what with that pull. Yeah. They didn't seem too impressed. Okay, well, uh, in which case... Let's... Let's do this port report. Most of the inhabitants were Londoners once, but that doesn't mean they are now. Uniform behaviour. Cataloguing all the peculiarities of the place takes many pages. The tailor who imports gilt buttons and braid just to be able to keep everyone's uniform in condition. The fashion of wearing a post bag with nothing inside. Wearing it open, wearing it upside down, torn apart or as a hat. Wearing it in any way that will show it doesn't have letters in it. Then there are the sitting rooms papered in cancelled stamps. The bergamot pomegranate curd on toast. The commerce in rat corpses, the hatred of cats, the absolute custom against ever issuing a paper invitation for any event, no matter how formal. It's the familiarity, the not quite Londonness of the place that made it all so odd. Okay, uh, any shops? There is. Uh, none of it useful at all. This is bad. We've got all this stuff, but. 
We're not really doing anything, are we? we, we we're making friends, it would appear. Let's okay. We're, we're quite high. I don't think we're any higher than we were there. That's the thing. I just want to get rid of these letters. We don't need them. Let's get rid of them. Still says first city, first city, first city, first city, first city is all the same. Right, that's gone now. Right. Do I just do it? Sixteen. It's not. It's not good, is it? Let, let's face it. It's not the best. Let's give it a whirl. Descend into the basement with mirrors. Arrange contraptions. Divert light. Illuminate what has been a dark and long time. Spiral on spiral on glittering spiral. The descent is long and, sn and slow. You count the turns at first, but the time comes when you can't see the square of light from the door above, and you can't mark how far you've come around the spiral. The illumination you have contrived gets dimmer the further you go, until you come at last to a floor whose base you can barely see. The floor is carpeted with, at first you think, it is gravel, but no, it is broken shards of clay and stone, all scribbled over in words too old to read. At the centre of this space is a needle of deep black rock, glossy as resin, glittering with ice, inscribed with three arcane sigils that hurt to look at. You feel a meaning in their presence, a prohibition, or a commandment, that all things must come to their destined place, that what cannot be delivered immediately must be saved against a future date, that a message that goes unheard is a tragedy. That signal must be carried, no matter how far, no matter through what darkness, no matter whether the sender still lives, nor whether the recipient can even read the language of the writing. The inscription re resolves itself and is known to you. No word lost. I succeeded! Hooray! I have no idea what all that meant. Uh, <laughs> right, so... Um, the higher the quality, the higher the chance of success. Yeah, well, who, need, who needs a decent success chance? You now have one searing enigma. Okay. Uh, an occurrence. Oh, we're a visitor to the centre stone. Does that mean we can go to the centre? That'd be cool. Uh, you've gained uh, another five terror. That's probably not so good. The climb out is, a sl is slow and takes a long time. Could you possibly have come down this far? Surely not. Your breath grows ragged and your legs cramp. So I can go up, or I can rest of, of the sp The rest of the spy will still be there after you've got your breath. Let's sit down for a second. Visions? Dreams? You relax against the shelf. It isn't comfortable at all, as the edge of the metal box is prodding you between the spine and the shoulder blade, and somewhere off to your right is a sound like hoarse breathing. It doesn't matter. In the dimness you see, or remember, or dream, a silver tree growing in a courtyard. The reverie lasts only a few heartbeats before you're properly awake again. Ah, uh, time to go. <laughs> there is no way but up. The dead letter office is still here, its machine still working, its basket still filling with missed invitations and misplaced wills. Shouldn't it have been blasted away, destroyed by the force of what lies beneath? Tell the postal rat what I saw below. I don't want to upset him, especially if I can. it opens up me being able to walk to the centre of the island. So let's have a quick look. Uh, can we do anything else in the tavern? Judge the postman in light of what you now know. Honour the postman in light of what you now know. Hmm. Do I... Mm, so do I, do I condemn them or do I accept that... This is a pretty difficult thing to do. Should we honour them? We're good guys. Do we honour them? Let's honour them. All have tried. Saints and martyrs. Nothing about them now seems comical or strange. The regulation maintenance of their uniforms is a mark of holy dedication. Their scars are earned by faith and hard work. They were given an impossible task, but none excuse themselves just because of that. The hairless postwoman sees your glance and returns a rueful smile. Hooray! We are now trusted! An occurrence. Uh, learned in postal quality secrets is now eight understanding of postal work. And we've lost Terra. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, with that in mind, can I have a uniform now? No. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it's worth a try. Uh, so, is there anything else I can do now? Um, the tavern is dead to me now, isn't it? There's nothing else to do. 
No. Um, anything else along the beach? No. And there's nothing else in the here, I guess. No, we are we are done. That is it. We 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 are. Wow. So we're we're a bona fide postal worker now. That's for sure. We've made a few friends and uh, hasn't helped us with our fuel or our food. Or our terror, well, ter you know, we've put, actually put our terror up overall, haven't we? We've, we've taken a few hits on terror, so uh, that's not very good either. And uh, that was, uh, wow, a, a whole episode dedicated to one island. McMaster's Haven, done and dusted. We may come back here at some point, but I think we better leave this here. I'm trying to make these episodes about half an hour long. So, a bit of a story-centric episode. I do apologise if, uh, if you don't like that sort of thing, but I did warn you this is a story game. It's something to chill out on the cold winter ish nights so thank you for watching as always a like is appreciated and i will catch you on the next episode take it easy